Hey, this is Daniel from Mataranda Pro. Today on set we were talking about small flash for portrait photography. A lot of people with these new DSLRs, they're great at low light, so they're saying, you know, maybe I don't need a flash or maybe I could use a small LED light as my main light source. And that does definitely work. You can use that for a lot of different things, but the power that a small flash has is control. In a tiny little package, these, these flashes have a lot of power. So I can basically take up my room and make it completely dark, or I can work with what's around me. So for the first portrait I'm gonna make of Dave, we're in the environment of the store. So I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna make it a, a shot of Dave in the environment of the store. So the first thing I did was I set my ambient exposure. I took my camera and I got an exposure for the background the way that I want it to be. I actually just used the meter in the camera and I figured out that I wanted about a stop dark. So the store goes a little bit dark and my subject really pops out. So if I just made a, sh a shot of Dave like this, he's gonna be very, very dark. I could open up my camera to, to, get, better, to get a better exposure for him, but then my store would become very bright behind him, which I don't really want. I want control of that. Again, the flash is about control. So I can take my flash, which I have on the camera, now I'll point out that I put on the top of this a, uh, a half CTO gel. The color temperature in the store is somewhere between daylight and tungsten, so a half seemed to work for me. I did a little experimentation. So if I take my flash directly on the camera, I'm gonna keep all my settings the same, and I'm gonna make a portrait of Dave like this. Okay, so we can see that a direct flash is not the most flattering way to shoot somebody. It's very harsh, it's fine, I guess, for news if you really have to get the shot, but it's really not that great. So, so what do you do? I'm by myself here. I don't have uh, you know, the time or equipment to set up anything, but what I can do is I can take my flash. Sure, I could bounce it off the roof. That might work in a, if you're uh, in a place with low ceilings or if you were really far back from somebody. But if I do it here with these like 15 foot ceilings, I'm gonna get nothing. So what I did was I brought with me this Lasolite reflector panel. So I can take my reflector, and in effect, I'm gonna take my flash, I'm gonna tilt the head this way, I'm gonna take my reflector, put it out where I want my source to be, and we're gonna make a photo of Dave. So we can see that's much nicer. It's basically kinda of like using a softbox. I can control the angle of it, I can put it up more if I want like a little bit of a higher source, and I can really sculpt the light however I want it. This is a great option if you have to work quickly and you know everybody's got a reflector they can carry around with them. It makes it super simple. But what I really wanna show you is how powerful this flash can be. Here I am in this store, and if I want to eliminate all the light in the store and create a shot that could, would've been made in the studio, the first thing I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm gonna turn off my flash. I don't care about the flash exposure right now. I'm gonna set my camera to get the store dark. So I'm gonna go, uh, the maximum sync speed of this camera is 250 of a second, so I'm gonna go 250, F11, 100 ISO. That's gonna get the store completely dark. Depending on your environment, you'll set it wherever you want it to be. Now again, I could take my flash and point it right at Dave, but that's gonna create an ugly picture and also some of it's gonna go past him and you're gonna see the store lit up. What I'm gonna do instead is use CLS, Nikon's remote system. I'm gonna turn this flash, instead of a flash, into a master. So you can see on the back of the flash here, I've got a few different settings. If I go all the way up to master, this now gives me control of multiple flash systems. The M on top is the flash that's on my camera. That three dashes means that it's gonna only operate as a master and not affect the exposure. Then I have A, B, and C channel. I'm actually gonna use two off-camera flashes. So I'm gonna go to channel A, and I'm gonna turn that one, hitting mode, I'm gonna turn that into a TTL flash. I'm then going to go over here to set my exposure. Right now, I'm going to set it at zero because I don't know what else. Until I make my first exposure, I don't know which one I want it set at. My flash B, which is going to be my hair light, I'm going to hit mode again to TTL again, leave it at zero. And I don't really have a third flash, but just to keep things neat, I'm going to go over here and just turn the third flash off. So right now, what I've got set is two flashes, both operating in TTL, both remote. Let me show you where the flashes are. So. Over here, I'm gonna have Dave work on a profile on this one. Over here, I have an SB910. For this flash, I'm gonna move it into remote. So here, I can set all my settings. So I'm, I'm uh, A, channel one, and it's at 18 millimeters. So this is perfect. I'm gonna use this with a Rogue three-in-one grid, and I have it set at the maximum uh, tightness for the grid. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna basically point it right to his face. Now, with the grid, because it keeps the light really tight, I don't exactly know where it's gonna fall, so one trick to that is just to fire the flash a couple times, and I can see where it's falling on his face. When I get it where I want it, I'm gonna leave that one there. Again, it's set in TTL right now. On this one right here, I have an SB800. 
So the SB800 is, is the previous generation of Nikon Flash. It still works with the CLS system, totally fine. And what I have on it is kind of a unique little thing here. Uh, here in, in the store we have one of these MakerBot uh, 3D printers and we actually made a grid in purple for the SB800. So we're gonna put this on. This is about roughly a five degree grid. So I'm gonna take this one, this is gonna be his backlight. So I'm gonna take this guy, using the same process, I have this in remote setting. I'm gonna put it towards the back of him. And again, I'm gonna fire, test fire the flash. Figure out where I want it, and I'm good. So at this point, because of the way TTL works, the camera is gonna make a judgment on my exposure. I'm gonna take a look at it and we'll make, it, we'll make a call whether or not we want it to be you know, up or down on either one of the flashes. Okay, so the one other thing that I think is cool since I have the gel here is maybe I wanna warm up my background light or my foreground light, but I think in this case background. I'm gonna take my gel. And again, this is a half, half CTO gel. I'm just gonna put it in front of this flash. And because I'm working in TTL, I don't have to worry about exposure. It's gonna automatically compensate for that gel. I like this kind of warm light coming from the back, but if you wanted it on the front, you could do the same thing. And again, it would automatically compensate for the gel. So there you go. I basically took complete control of my space with tiny little flashes that I could easily fit in the bag that I carried over my shoulder. This entire kit that I have here, including the camera, the lenses, not the stands or the tripod, obviously, fit in this little Domkey bag. You could bring it on location wherever you go, and you could completely take control of your situation. If you're in the New York City area, be sure to stop by the store. We have events every Thursday. They're always free. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set. <laughs>